Welcome back to Life to the Max. Admit it, we've all had visions of stumbling upon that big payday, that hidden treasure that no one else has found. And you can't help but think about it when you're out on water, what's buried down there and how could you find it? There is a new way and a new technology that helps you get there. It's called geocaching. I've heard a lot about geocaching lately, so I grabbed my GPS unit and came to visit one of our local state parks for a geocache adventure. The DNR has set up a geocaching program to help introduce visitors to Minnesota State Parks and to the increasingly popular activity of geocaching. For those of you unfamiliar with geocaching, it's a modern day high-tech treasure hunt. I joined a school group and we were given an introduction to the activity. You're going to learn how to use a GPS unit today and do a, a sport called geocaching. This unit will tell you where you are using latitude and longitude, okay? So in geocaching, we have some predetermined points that we want you to go to. These things are only accurate within 20 to 40 feet. So these are gonna get you close, but the last 20 feet, you guys just have to look for the treasure. We were given a list with coordinates of caches to hunt. Caches with answers about history of the park. A history challenge. Now in your case, now, your treasure is something that will help you answer the question on your sheet of paper. Geocaching can be done anywhere, in your neighborhood, in all of Minnesota State Parks, anywhere in the state, across the country, and around the world. It's like a global scavenger hunt. Geocaching started in 2000 when the federal government changed the uh, satellites so they could be used for public use rather than just government use. I found them as far south as uh, in Luther, Bahamas. I found them in Ontario, Canada by Niagara Falls and all over. I found about 24, 2600 in Minnesota. The Minnesota DNR created a committee of staff and geocache experts to develop the Geocache History Challenge program for the state parks. We really wanted to focus on history, but some of that history dated back to 10,000 years ago at Mille Lacs Cathedral State Park. Some of the history was recent, like here at Snelling, that's only been around um, since 1960 as a state park, but had a history that went much deeper. With the geocaching program, kids are active, having fun, and learning, but may not even realize it. I thought it was fun because we got to go through the wilderness and we got to learn about like how, how, how tall the floods were. 1880, the water was here. So, when was the highest flood? That looks like 1965. What do you think this is? It's like a headpiece, maybe, yeah. that was okay. put okay. in by uh, the founder of Dakota. But this is bigger than a head headband itself. I mean, a head. So this is probably like a ceremonial, ceremonial piece. Ceremonial, like a ceremonial yeah. thing they have, like when they light a fire in the ceremony. Yeah. Okay. Ah, using their senses like the program plan. It was really a new activity for the kids. A lot of them just naturally picked up on it and did much better than I think even I would do with an activity like that. They seemed to get into the equipment, follow the directions, do the coordinates, um, and I kind of just went along for the ride and they did great. The kids had their hunt and I wanted a hunt of my own. I teamed up with Claire, an experienced geocacher, got her bearings, and we were off. So now it's got us going across. Yep, this looks like we're right. These have got a lot of information on it. Wow, I couldn't believe the amount of information given by a GPS unit. That's what's so unique about it, is you can find any type of geocache to please you. You know, if you like more extreme and adventures, you can find caches that require you to have rock climbing equipment or scuba diving equipment. Or you can find caches that follow a trail and, you know, maybe take you off the trail 10 feet. Having a task to focus on is great, but there are so many interesting surprises in nature. Just keep your eyes and mind open. There it is. Nice. We don't need these anymore. I know. You want to shut them off, conserve battery. Yep. All right. Official geocache. Okay, Good that's, job. That's the right one. You always want to leave your mark and sign the logbook. And the whole point of geocaching is you can take something and you can leave something. Okay. And so I brought some special sesquicentennial pins to leave. Well, we found our treasure. I thought geocaching was a fun challenge, 
searching and finding something we had no idea where it was. If you're curious about geocaching, visit www.geocaching.com. It's free and easy. Army laddies and lassies, and go have yourself a treasure hunt. When we come back, we'll wrap up this edition of Life to the Max. Stay with us. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.